Okay, everybody. This is our first video that I've tried dealing with local extrema. And I guess the best thing to do is just to jump right in. Talking about this, uh, you're going to find that it's pretty straightforward. Still dealing with derivatives, but now we're into applications of derivatives. And I really think you'll find this pretty simple once we go through it. Um, most of your textbooks try to make it a little bit harder than it really is, but I think you'll find this to be pretty simple. All right, first of all, we've got to put forth a little bit of effort as to find out when and how you find the extrema. All right. So, first of all, in order to find extrema, your function, first of all, must be continuous on the interval that you're talking about whether it's an open interval, such as from negative infinity to infinity, or in a closed interval, like something from, I don't know, negative 4 to 2. But I think you know the difference between an open and a closed interval. Now, let me give you an example of what we mean by uh, extrema, or what we're talking about by local minimum, local maximum, global minimum, global maximum. Uh, let's start with just a simple little graph here. Uh, let's do something like this. All right, with this graph, this will be my solid endpoints. Now, this is my global minimum. It is the very lowest point of the whole graph. This solid dot up here is my global maximum. If that were an open end, it would not be a global max. Okay? Now, the rest of them are either local minimums or local maximums. This is a local max. This is a local min. Okay? Straightforward. The very lowest, very highest is the global Anywhere in between is your local. All right? Now, your application of your derivative deals with your critical points. Critical points are endpoints, points of inflection, local minimums, local maximums. Now, what you've got to remember is that when your first derivative is equal to zero, you have a critical point. And when your first derivative doesn't exist, you have a critical point. Now let's put a little, let's kind of tie all this together, all right? Now let's take, for example, this sort of drawing. All right, this right here, according to what we were talking, and I'm just going to put arrows, what we were talking about this would be your minimum and this would be your local max. Local min, local max. So according to what we have here, remember that your first derivative is the same thing as the slope of your tangent line. On this side of the curve over here, I have a negative slope. So over here, the first derivative is less than zero right here. At this point, my first derivative is greater than zero. In other words, it's increasing over here. Well, when your first derivative changes signs from negative to positive, then you have a minimum. Over here, this one is a negative. It's less than zero. So therefore, if your first derivative goes from positive to negative, then you have a local max. Pretty simple. you got to have a change in, in sign. Alright? Now, if your first derivative does not change signs, then you don't have a local extrema. You don't have a local min, nor do you have a local max. Possible have a point of inflection. All right, such as with this graph. 
this would be a point of inflection. And notice I still have negative slopes, so this would be a critical point, but because you didn't change signs of your slopes, it would be a point of inflection. All right? Now, let me give you an example. Let's start with simple. Let's say you have a function f of x is equal to x squared minus 6x plus 3. And you're asked to find the local extremas, whether they be minimums or maximums. Well, the very first thing I need to do is take the first derivative. So, the derivative of f of x is equal to 2x minus 6, or to make my math a little bit easier, 2 times the quantity x minus 3. All right? Now, let's just, my critical point is going to be 3, wherever this would be equal to 0. So I'm just going to get myself a number line and put the number 3 on it. And I'm going to test numbers to the left of 3 and numbers to the right of 3. So let's take a number to the left of 3. Let's say it's 2. Place a 2 here. You get negative 1. 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. So you get a negative value. Pick a number to the right of 3. 4. 4 minus 3 is 1. 2 times 1 is 2. That's positive. So like we said before, if your first derivative signs change, then you have a minimum or a maximum. And if I'm changing from a negative slope to a positive slope, then this becomes a local minimum. Now the question is, what is that local minimum point? Well, all I have to do is take that critical value plug it back into your function. So f at 3 is equal to 3 squared minus 6 times 3 plus 3 or 9 minus 18 plus 3 or... is that right? Or negative 6. So my point is 3, negative 6. That is my minimum point, the local minimum. Is that okay? Now, let's look, oh, and by the way, sometimes you'll be asked on what um, intervals is your function increasing and decreasing? Right here, according to my number line, from negative infinity to 3, it's decreasing according to my graph, over here, from 3 to infinity, I am increasing. Those are the intervals in which I'm either decreasing or increasing. And because I'm decreasing and then increasing, then you have a local minimum. Alright, let's go to the next example. Let's work with, uh, let's say, yeah, this is a good one. Let's do f of x is equal to one-third x cubed minus x squared minus 3x plus 4. Now, again, you want to know what are your extremes. Well, the first thing we got to do is take a derivative. So the derivative of x is equal to 3 times a third is 1, so this would be x squared minus 2x minus 3. That's my derivative. So if I factor this, my critical points are, and I'm going to put it on a number line, this just makes it life a lot easier, negative 1 and 3. Those are my critical points. So now I'm going to pick numbers to the left of negative 1 and see what happens. Number between negative 1 and 3 and see what happens. A number to the right of 3 to see what happens. Now, let's pick negative 2. Negative 2 minus 3 is negative 5, so this one is negative for the moment. 
Negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1. Negative times a negative is positive. So this is positive. A number between negative 1 and 3. 0. That would make this a negative 3. This a positive 1. Negative times positive is negative. Now, pick a value to the right of 3. 4. 4 minus 3, positive 1. 4 plus 1, positive 5. Positive times a positive is positive. So, now that we're looking at, these are representing the slopes of your derivatives. So this is increasing, this is decreasing, this is increasing. So if I have an increasing slope and then a decreasing slope, then this becomes a local maximum. If I have a decreasing slope, then an increasing slope, this becomes a local minimum. So, so far, I know that I am increasing on the intervals from negative infinity to negative 1 and interval from 3 to infinity. These I'm increasing on. I'm decreasing on the interval from negative 1 to 3. So now what if you want to know the actual points? All I do is plug in the negative 1 and the 3 back into the original formula. Okay? So let's do that. Let me make some room here. Negative 1 and 3 back into the original formula. Negative 1 and 3. And I said that negative 1 was a local max and 3 was a local min. So f at negative 1 is equal to 1 third times negative 1 cubed minus negative 1 squared minus 3 times negative 1 plus 4. So that would be negative 1 times a third is negative 1 third. This becomes 1, so this would be minus 1 plus 3, plus 4. So that's negative 4 thirds plus 7. Well, that's 21 thirds. Negative 4 plus 21 be 17 thirds. So the first ordered pair is negative 1, 17 thirds. That's your local max. So now let's look at the minimum. f at 3 is equal to 1 third times 3 cubed minus 3 squared minus 3 times 3 plus 4. Well, 1 third times one of these 3's is 1, so this just becomes 9 minus 9 minus 9 plus 4. 9 minus 9, this is 0. Negative 4 plus 5 is negative 5. So the minimum is 3, negative 5. That's your local minimum. Now just to sort of reemphasize re this or to show you that you know what you're talking about, this is an x to the third, a general s shape. It has a positive leading coefficient. So that means its general shape is that. This would have been where the negative 1 was. This would have been where the 3 was the local max, the local min. Alright? One more, dealing with local mins and max. This is a little more difficult because we're going to pick up trig on this one. So how about this? f of x is equal to the cosine of x divided by... I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm getting ahead of myself. It is the sine of x to the two-thirds power. Alright, so now, first of all, let's take the derivative. So the first derivative is equal to two-thirds 
sine of x to the negative one-third, and then the derivative of the sine is to cosine. So now you have two cosine x divided by the sine of x to the one-third. So now we're looking for critical points. Well, if you remember your trig, all right, I'm going to set this equal to zero. So what value, when you put it in for cosine, will make this zero? Zero, right? And what value of sine will make this undefined? That'll make that undefined, right? What will make it when x is equal to pi over 2? Cosine of pi over 2 is 0. Sine of pi over 2 is 1. So that's a critical point. Cosine of 0 is 1. Sine of 0 is 0, making it undefined. Remember we said that if the first derivative is equal to zero or does not exist, which it wouldn't do when you had one over zero, then that's where your critical points are. My critical points are at zero and pi over two. Now, I'm going to work off this value right here, these points. So let's put these on our number line and see what happens. Zero and pi over two. Right, so the first derivative was equal to 2 cosine x divided by 3 times the sine of x to the one third. I think I left off my 3, though, just be careful. Alright, so now let's look at 0 and pi over 2. Alright, if you go less than 0, uh, let's say it's, I don't know, pi over 6, negative pi over 6. Then you're going to get negative here. And you can verify that for yourself. If you go from positive, this will be positive. And what about between 0 and pi over 2? Between 0 and pi over 2, this is positive, this is positive, so you get positive. Is that alright? Uh, anything past pi over 2, the cosine is negative, the sine is positive, so this would be a negative. So you have decreasing, increasing, decreasing. Decreasing, increasing, minimum. Increasing, decreasing, maximum. So at zero, when you put zero in, you get out zero, so my local minimum is zero, zero. Pi over two is a maximum, and when you put in pi over two, remember you get out one, so pi over two, one is your maximum. And if you just want to know what the graph looks like, it's going to look something like this. Now that's the first derivative test. In the next video that we make, we're going to be talking about the second derivative test. And I think that you'll like it in that the second derivative sometimes is a little bit easier. Thanks for watching.